is any medium let us say like water then I can define refractive index of water with respect to air that means incident light rays traveling in air and the refracted light is traveling in water so in that case a mu w is written as sin i upon sin r in terms of the velocity of light in these two media we can write the ratio of the ratio of velocity of light in the first medium to the velocity of light in the second medium so here c represents velocity of light in air vw represents velocity of light in water this type of refractive index is called as the absolute refractive index of that particular medium similarly if i take the second medium as glass then i can write a mu g equal to c upon this vg this is called as the absolute refractive index of glass in other words in, in another way also it can be represented simply write mu w this a it can be uh, neglected or it can be dropped that that a can be dropped now here also it is mu g now suppose here i have a medium one medium one and this is medium two let us say that this is water and this is glass so in this case how to define the refractive index of glass with respect to water in the earlier examples we have defined the refractive index of one medium with respect to air so now if the two media are different apart from air how can it be done in such cases we can write we can use these uh, equations here the refractive index of glass with respect to water it can be written as the ratio of velocity of light in water divided by velocity of light in glass we can substitute the values of vw and vg from these equations so from this equation if i write if i write here vw then vw equal to uh, here vw equal to i can write uh, c upon a mu w similarly from this equation vg can be written as c upon here a mu g now let me substitute these values here if i substitute this c upon a mu w divided by vg this is c upon a mu g grow cc gets cancelled then i get a mu g upon a mu w or else by dropping this a i can write mu g upon mu w so this is the final equation in other words also i can write suppose this is first medium this is second medium then let me use this equation again 1 mu uh, 2 this is equal to uh, mu 2 upon this mu 1 this equation also you can uh, remember so here in this uh, sin i by sin r equal to mu this mu is called as a refractive index of the medium as i told you earlier it is a ratio of the velocities of light so here since the refraction is taking from first medium to second medium therefore it can be written like this one mu two can also be written now if i uh, use these two equations then i get sin i upon sin r equal to mu two upon mu one after class multiplication we get mu one sin i equal to mu two sin r so this is called as the equation or this is actually the Snell's law in terms of refractive indices of both the media. This is called the Snell's law. So the refraction has two laws. In refraction, uh, refraction we have two laws. The first law which says that incident ray, refracted ray and the normal at the point of incidence all are lying in the same plane. The second law says that the ratio of sign of angle of incidence to the sign of angle of refraction always remains constant and this constant is called as the refractive index of that particular medium this refractive index is of two types one is the absolute refractive index then comes the relative refractive index 
in absolute refractive index the first medium is taken as air or free space whereas in the second type of relative refractive index both the media may be uh, any type of the media apart from air so this is what uh, refraction is all about now after completion of the refraction let us apply this knowledge to the spherically refracting surfaces and how the image formation takes place and what are the various relations that we would like to see here now i will be explaining you about how the refraction takes place at spherical surfaces spherical reflecting uh, refracting surfaces spherical refracting surfaces for the purpose i will take the spherical refracting surface here which is in the form of the convex shape and uh, uh, it is made of a glass and uh, the refractive index of the glass is mu2 so this is placed in air therefore the surrounding medium is air whose refractive index is mu1 of course these are the absolute refractive indices of the two media now this is x and this is y so this x y is the convex refracting surface the center of this surface is called as the pole x y is called as the aperture usually we select the spherically refracting surfaces whose aperture is very small this x p y it is a small part of a very big sphere whose center lies somewhere here so this center is called as the center of curvature if these two points pole and the center of curvature if they are joined then this is called as the principal axis now this x y one line i am drawing here then what we do we will place one object here on the principal axis which is o the object is a point sized which is always placed on the principal axis okay to show the formation of image first ray i will take along the principal axis so this ray goes undeviated next another ray i will take incident ray at point a so a is a point where second ray is falling at that point of incidence a i am drawing one a normal and this normal passes through the center of curvature this is c now the angle of incidence is here this is angle of incidence i the angle made by the incident ray with the normal since the ray is traveling from rarer medium to the denser medium therefore it bends towards the normal instead of going straight it will bend uh, towards the normal like this so this is the refracted ray second refracted ray this is the first refracted ray both are meeting at this point so then the point i will be the real image so this diagram shows the formation of the real image of the object when placed in rarer medium for this i have to derive a relation between the object distance u image distance v r that is called as a radius of curvature then the refractive indices mu1 and mu2 so this formula we have to derive so let me explain it again further purpose the earlier assumptions were aperture is small object is the point sized it is always placed on the principal axis all the angles are very very small here the angles made by the incident ray refracted ray all they are all very small angles so i will be representing those this angle is alpha take this angle as beta and this angle as gamma at the place of object alpha at the place of image beta at c it is gamma then here this angle is the angle of refraction angle made by the refracted light ray with the normal that is angle r and uh, from here a you drop one perpendicular you call it as m so this this line uh, let us remove so with the help of this diagram we can derive this desired relation we can use the geometry here we can use the properties of triangles here so in the diagram you take one triangle 
in triangle O A C. If I consider a triangle O A C, then alpha plus gamma must be equal to I. That means angle I is already got it. Similarly, in a triangle, I uh, will consider this triangle now, this triangle A C I, A C I, we get R plus beta equal to gamma. This gives me R equal to gamma minus beta. That means I got the angles I and R. Then the Snell's law says mu 1 sin i equal to mu 2 sin r because the object is placed in the first medium, image is placed, image is obtained in the second medium. Since the angles are very small, I can write this like this mu 1 i equal to mu 2 r. Now, I will be substituting the values of i and r. So, it is mu 1 alpha plus gamma this is equal to mu 2 gamma minus beta. Again these angles can be re replaced by alpha can be replaced by tan alpha likewise gamma is replaced by tan gamma and I will complete the right hand side in the same way it is tan gamma minus tan uh, beta. Now, what we have to do is we have to find out the values of the tan alpha, tan beta and tan gamma from the diagram. So, if I do that it is mu 1 multiplied by tan alpha. So, you take this triangle O M A. So, in this the tan alpha is A M upon you know M O plus this tan gamma I want this is A M upon a m upon this m c equal to mu 2 multiplied by the tan gamma it is a m upon m c minus a tan beta. So, if the angle beta is here then it is a m upon a m upon m i. Now, a m m can be uh, removed in the next step. Then instead of writing m o m c and m i what we can do is since the aperture is small already we have assumed earlier since the aperture is very small then the distances measured from m must be equal to distances measured from p. So, therefore, in the next step what I do I will substitute m o by p o then plus 1 upon this P C, it is equal to mu 2 multiplied by mu 2 multiplied by this 1 upon M C is P C minus it is 1 upon M I is P I. Now, using the sign conventions again, we can write mu 1 multiplied by 1 upon P O. P O is nothing but the object distance. So, it is u plus 1 upon this P C. P C is nothing but it is r. This is equal to mu 2 multiplied by 1 upon r minus 1 upon P i is the image distance. We can introduce the sign convention here since the object is towards left side therefore, it is minus sign and uh, radius of curvature is measured towards right side therefore, plus image is already towards right side of the pole therefore, it is positive. Now, rearranging the terms we get here minus mu 1 upon u plus mu 1 upon r this is equal to mu 2 upon r minus mu 2 upon v. Then comes this term take this term towards the right hand side and this term towards the left hand side. Then I get mu 2 upon v minus mu 1 upon u this is equal to this r is common here then I get mu 2 minus mu 1.
So, this is the final equation which represents the relation between the two refractive indices of the medium object distance, image distance and the radius of curvature. This is important 5 mark question. The question comes like this derive the equation or derive the formula for refraction at convex spherical surfaces. Likewise, when the object is placed in the denser medium and when the image is formed in the rarer medium, then also you can derive such step of relation. Then in that case, you get the answer means these refractive indices gets interchanged actually. So, in that case, you get mu 1 upon mu 1 upon v minus mu 2 upon u this is equal to mu 1 minus mu 2 upon r. Students, you please try uh, this derivation uh, at home. 